If you think you need Spark to use Snowflake, you're missing the point of Snowpark. Online, you'll see comparisons between Spark and Snowpark, like this web page, which declares that Snowpark delivers the benefits of Spark and none of the complexities. Other Snowpark advantages include fast performance and low cost. Like Spark, you can write Snowpark code in Python, Scala, and Java. You'll also see Snowpark compared to PySpark, so I'll cover both Spark and PySpark in this video. However, the biggest hint that Snowpark is a Spark clone comes from its name, which confirms that Snowflake now has Spark functionality. Let's go through a quick history lesson. First, an open source search indexer was built named Lucene. Then a web crawler named Nutch was created so that the two open source projects could be used together to create a search engine. Google published white papers about its distributed file system and its MapReduce programming model, which the Nutch developers cloned in Java to enable their system to search across billions of web pages. Looking back at the original Nutch site, their goal was to open source search engine software so that no single company would control nearly all web search for its commercial gain. When the Nutch team stated this goal, Google had only about 18% of the global search market. Today, their share is over 90%, so Nutch didn't really level the playing field, but it was successful in another way. Nutch became a sub-project under Lucene, and Lucene later split off their MapReduce and file system code into a new project named Hadoop. As Hadoop became popular, other cluster computing frameworks started popping up, like the Storm Stream Processor and the Elastic Search Engine. Folks wanted to run multiple frameworks on the same cluster to maximize resource utilization and to share data between frameworks, so Nexus was created, and it was later renamed Mesos. To simply demonstrate the capabilities of Mesos, a new framework was created named Spark, which could run on top of Mesos alongside other frameworks. According to Spark's original creator, Spark was designed to demonstrate how easy it was to build a new specialized framework by using the Mesos scheduling and communication features. So Spark was just a sub-project under Mesos, until it too became a top-level Apache project on its own. Fast forward seven years and Spark, which was simply a use case for Mesos, outlived the resource manager it was designed to run on. Spark was written in Scala, which has an easier functional programming syntax than Java, but also runs on the Java Virtual Machine. The JVM was used to enable Spark to easily interact with the Hadoop file system and to make the software easier to deploy across various server types. Beginning with release 0.6, programmers could use Spark via a Java API. And in release 0.7, Python programmers got their own API and could use Spark via the PySpark package. Many popular Python libraries have Py, P-Y, in their name, so this explains why Spark's Python package is named PySpark. Spark was originally thought of as in-memory MapReduce, so it was faster than on-disk Hadoop, but it was also a lot easier to write Spark code. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how Spark evolved with new features. The Hello World of Parallel Distributed Processing is a simple word count program, so I'll use it in my examples to count the 200,000 words in this essay about U.S. history. As its name implies, a MapReduce program calls two primary functions, Map and Reduce. Writing MapReduce for Hadoop was a nightmare with all the Java boilerplate code. Here's an example of a Java word count driver program that instantiates map and reduce objects. Here's the code for the map class and the code for the reduce class. 
Because Java MapReduce was so difficult to write, Yahoo researchers created a higher level abstraction called Pig, which had a language that was so much easier to understand. If you learned Pig back in the day, the transition to Spark was much easier because it used some similar techniques like lazy evaluation, optimization, and directed acyclic graphs. As you can see, Pig scripts were a lot easier to write, but they were slow because they still ran on disk since Pig code was automatically converted into Java MapReduce. Spark's original Python API was slower than equivalent code written in Scala or Java because there was a lot of context switching and communications overhead between Python and the JVM. Programming for Spark in the original Python API was also a little convoluted because you had to use Lambda abstractions similar to how you did with functional programming languages. And you can still see its relationship to Hadoop MapReduce with map and reduce functions. Things got better when Spark's Milestone 1.0 version was released because of the introduction of Spark SQL. Under the hood, Spark performs logical and physical optimizations similar to a database management system, plus it compiles the query into Java bytecode, which runs natively on a JVM. As you can see in this version of a word count query, Spark SQL looks similar to typical SQL statements. The next big step up for Spark was when they introduced a new data frame API, which was inspired by the main data structure in the R programming language and in Python's pandas package. A data frame looks similar to a spreadsheet. Originally, to enable SQL queries in Spark, a new collection class was introduced consisting of row objects with an associated schema. Then, to enable data frame programming, the collection was converted into a new class, which is manipulated using domain-specific language methods. 30 new methods were added, including those similar to SQL, plus methods that are similar to those in Pandas. A common process optimizes queries written in both Spark SQL and the DataFrame DSL. DataFrame relational operators build up an abstract syntax tree, just like a parser does for SQL statements. Using PySpark to write DataFrame logic is as easy as writing SQL statements. Spark is a computational engine. Despite the fact that some services package it with data storage features, Spark is not a data lake or a data mesh or whatever the new data buzzword is. In fact, Snowpark can be described exactly like Spark's definition of itself today. Snowpark is a multi-language engine for executing data engineering, data science, and machine learning on single node machines or clusters. When comparing Snowflake to Spark, Snowflake's cloud database obviously already provided SQL functionality, so what was missing from the Snowflake platform was data frame programming, which is now provided by Snowpark, a feature announced at Snowflake's annual conference in 2020. With Python worksheets, folks can build data pipelines, ML models, and data apps directly from Snowflake's user interface, SnowSite. Like I did here, when I built a Snowpark word count program. The Snowpark APIs are so similar to the Spark APIs that folks with experience in Spark will have no trouble writing Snowpark code. First, we convert all letters to lowercase and remove all punctuation. Then we convert each line of text into an array of words and create a new row for each word. We remove empty strings, remove all common stop words, count all occurrences of each word, sort by count from highest to lowest, and display the top 10 most frequent words. Snowpark simply translates your PySpark-like code into SQL and runs it on the Snowflake query engine. Here I ask Snowpark to show me the SQL statement that my data frame code will be converted into. To prove this works, I ran the generated SQL in Snowflake and receive the same results that I did when I ran the Snowpark code. 
The snowpark examples I've shown have accessed internal snowflake tables, like this one which I named in an obvious way. So you can use snowpark for ELT to transform data that you first ingested into a raw snowflake table. But you can also use snowpark on external tables. Here I defined an external stage by pointing to the URL for a parquet file in Azure Data Lake Storage. Then I use Snowpark to compute the daily COVID death toll across all U.S. cities. So you can use Snowpark to perform ETL on external files too. Whereas Snowpark will translate your data frame code into SQL and run it on its database engine, code from special Python packages like ML libraries will run in a Python interpreter. I hope you understand more about the similarities between Snowpark and Spark now.